Coming up, the power of prayer saves a woman from a life-threatening brain bleed. And after a young boy is hit by a car, his family witnesses a miraculous recovery. Welcome to 700 Club Canada. We're so glad you're here with us. You know, Shauna, as we've been doing some of these episodes and having these prayer requests, something that I notice is often a prayer request or something that we're asking God for is for healing in our body. Do you find that? Right, absolutely. I mean, I feel like everyone we talk to, everyone just says, I'm in pain or I need healing for mm. something. But why is that? Yeah, I think often we're always, we're looking for this uh, feeling of feeling whole, right. right? And so when something doesn't feel f whole, we think there's something wrong in our bodies. Right. And so um, when really what we need to fail with that is Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have some incredible testimonies coming up in today's episode, and we're going to hear just how God heals. And this is how Glenda defied expectations with an unexpected recovery from a sudden brain bleed. And she just started flailing at me and hitting me and, and uh, making all kind of weird noises. So I just thought she was having a bad dream. Greg Bell had been concerned when his wife, Glenda, went to bed early with a headache. The 63-year-old wasn't usually one to complain. She's had headaches, but nothing like this one. This headache was piercing. Then at 1.30 that morning, Glenda began thrashing in bed. I just reached over and kind of tapped her and said, hey, it's okay, you're just having a bad dream. She wouldn't wake up, it scared me. So I jumped out of bed and my son was here in the basement. So I hollered at him to call 911. I was trying to wake her and she was just kind of having convulsions or something. So I was pretty panicky. When the ambulance arrived, Glenda was still unresponsive. So paramedics airlifted her to Mercy Hospital in Springfield, Missouri, 100 miles away. That really concerned me. They was strapping her down in the gurney, and this whole time she never would wake up. She just was still out of it. Greg and his son Josh began the two-hour drive to Springfield. We was definitely praying on the way up there. I was just, you know, really scared because I didn't know what was going to happen. Trying not to drive 90 to 100 mile an hour, <laughs> I just wanted to get there as quick as I could. By the time they arrived at Mercy, it was 4 a.m. Josh had already started reaching out to family and friends for prayer. Now, they waited for an update on Glenda's condition. It was just me and him in that empty room with my wife. Felt like I couldn't pray myself. I was going through so much emotions at that time. I broke down. And, I, and what was on my mind, I thought, my son's never seen me cry. A few minutes later, the doctor came in. He told Greg that Glenda had a large intraparenchymal hemorrhage bleeding deep in the brain from a ruptured blood vessel. The only course of action would be to put her in a medically induced coma and wait for the bleeding and swelling to subside. They weren't sure if she would ever recover. I said, I just lost my mom two months ago. It was unexpected. I said, I point blank asked him, I said, could she die? And he said, yeah, she could. After the doctor left, Greg asked Josh to pray. Moments later. She just kind of like spoke up and said, what's going on? And so we explained to her what had happened and everything. And she's like, well, I feel fine, I'm good. The doctor walked in and he looked at her and he said, what's going on here? But the shock on his face is what like, you know, something was going on here. He wasn't telling me everything that was happening. Her doctor asked Greg into his office and pulled up the scans of Glenda's brain that showed a six centimeter brain bleed. And he said, I want you to see this. This is just bad. <laughs> he was in a state of shock. He just like couldn't believe it. I think he realized that there was more at work than because they had they'd not touched her yet. They hadn't done a thing to her. She just talking away and she was just like chatty and carrying on. Now there was no need to put Glenda in a coma. Soon their family and friends started coming in to pray and show their support. We had a room full there in the waiting room. That comforted me as much as anything. I'm like, why are you here? This is pretty awesome. I didn't have any pain. I, I was good. I just didn't know, you know, why all those people were there. 
other than slight memory loss, Glenda was back to her old self. I think she could have gone up and got up and run around the building, but they wouldn't let her out of the bed. They wouldn't let her move. They threatened to tie her down even because she was kind of like, I need to do this or I need to do that. She was wired. By the end of the week, the brain bleed and memory loss had resolved. So after a short stay in rehab, she went home. I was just amazed and, and you know, so thankful that, uh, you know, that everything had come through like this. Glenda is now completely back to normal and more active than ever. Her family is grateful for the prayers that brought her through. Prayer was everything in my life's survival. I don't think she'd be here today if it hadn't been for the prayers going up. And not just my prayers, but so many prayers that was going up that day. We're going stronger now than we ever have. God's the only one that done this. If they hadn't prayed, I don't think I would have made it. God is so good, ask big. He's a great, big, big, big God. Friends, as we listen to Glenda's testimony, I can't help but marvel at how powerful our prayers are. God works through the prayer of his people in ways that honestly we could never fully imagine. It encourages me even in my own life as I believe for full healing in health challenges that I've experienced over the last couple of years. James 5 verse 16 says, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Your prayers matter. God's healing involves the power of prayer, both for ourselves and for others as we pray for them. At any moment, we can come before God as we face uncertainties about our health and believe that He is our great healer. His name is Jehovah Rapha, which means God who heals. In the Gospels, we witness Jesus' ministry of healing where we see that he touched sick people, people who were blind received sight and the broken found restoration. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So that means his healing power is not limited to the past. It is available to us today. If that's you, if you're believing for a miracle in your life and, and health, then we would love to provide you with a resource titled Answered Prayer. You can get a copy by calling our prayer lines at 1-855-759-0700 and we would love to pray with you and believe with you for that miracle that you yourself are praying for. After the break, the Ruth family's vacation suddenly turned into a fight for survival. In whatever circumstance you face, God wants you to have victory. It's not too late. Believe that God wants to do a miracle in your life today. And if you need to talk with someone who understands, all you have to do is call us at 1-855-759-0700. A prayer partner is waiting to listen and pray with you today. August 8th, 2021. The Ruth family were on their way to their annual vacation, camping in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. As always, they prayed before getting on the road. And we would just pray for traveling mercies, that we would be a, a bold witness, you know, for everybody that we come in contact while we're out and on vacation and everything else. Almost two hours into the trip, they stopped for gas and a bite to eat. While there, the father, Mike, and their oldest daughter stayed at the gas station as the mom, Paris, started across a busy intersection with their younger children. After crossing the first two lanes safely, Paris and Calais stopped when they saw oncoming traffic. However, Fisher didn't look and stepped in front of an oncoming car. I saw what was about to happen and I said, Fisher, look right. And he was thrown into the air. He landed on his head, he landed in a crumple. I thought to myself, the, the thought crossed my mind, you just watched your son die right in front of you. Frantic, Paris called 911. By now, Mike and Rebecca had run to their side. You go immediately to thinking the worst. What would he look like? Would I be able to talk to him? He was anguishing and pain and crying, and it's a time that you realize there is nobody but God that can help you at that point. 
I was just praying and begging God for his life and just saying, please don't take him from me. The paramedics arrived within minutes. After stabilizing Fisher, they put him along with his mom in an ambulance and headed toward McLeod Regional Medical Center, a trauma one facility. By now, friends, family, and their church had been told to pray for Fisher. I wanted to let him know we had many people praying for him. And then the other thing that was really on my heart, I said, Fisher, I love you. In the ER, doctor's biggest fear was that he'd suffered severe brain damage. We waited for those test results to come back, and that was anguishing time to wait. Finally, the results. Other than a mild concussion, bruises, and road rash, Fisher would be fine. There was no broken bones, no skull fracture, no brain bleed. There was no problem shown on the CT scan. Just never say thank you enough to God that we're able to all be together and that we still had Fisher with us. I just started thinking about the goodness of God in our life. All the glory, all the credit, you know, everything was to him. Seven hours later, Fisher was released. Although bandaged up in some pain and a little foggy, he and the family were able to continue their vacation. After a couple of days rest, Fisher was enjoying all the activities he loved. He even went swimming. I realized how much worse it could have been and what, I've, what I was protected from. And I was thankful to God that, it was, that I was alive and that I was able to go on vacation still. As I looked at him, I just kept going back to the goodness of God in that there were so many things that had to be aligned for him to be able to be standing there like he was. Since then, Fisher has completely healed and has no residual effects from the concussion. Police reports would later conclude the car was going almost 30 miles an hour and he was thrown 15 feet in the air before landing on his head. The doctors said it was a miracle he survived. Prayer definitely had something to do with me just being okay. If you pray and are sincere about what you're praying, you will receive an answer. We put God in a box. And if we'll trust him and we'll put our life in his hands, fully, he will bless us. We can never say thank you enough for God to heal our son, to give us this miracle. God is faithful. He is trustworthy. Wow, can you imagine seeing your child getting hit by a car? I can't even begin to fathom what I would do. What would be your first instinct? Fisher's parents knew God was the only one who could truly help, which is so amazing. There is power in prayer. I love what Fisher said. If you pray and are really sincere about what you are praying, you will receive an answer. And the Bible tells us in James 5, 16, that the effective and fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That means it works. When you pray, it works works. And the best part is that our prayers don't have to be pretty or perfect. The power of the prayer comes from the one who hears it, not from the one who delivers it. There are countless stories of Jesus healing throughout the Bible. The lame man walking, the blind man seeing, the deaf man hearing, the men with leprosy being cleansed, the little girl being healed from her deathbed, Lazarus being brought back from the dead, even Jesus completely reattaching the Roman soldier's ear in the Garden of Gethsemane. But the question remains, can God heal me today? God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And the miracles he did yesterday, he is still performing today. If you are in need of healing, be encouraged and know that your God can and will heal you. He spoke it in his word in Psalm 103, 2 to 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. And Psalms 147, 3 says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Believe what God has already spoken. He holds his word higher than his name, and his name is great.
And I would love for you to get a hold of this pamphlet, Faith, if you call our number at 1-855-759-0700. And coming up, Krista's life-threatening brain tumor leads to a miraculous recovery and a divine encounter with God. I do have a memory of Tim and Josh standing in front of me and Tim said, Krista, you have to go to the hospital. I started to protest, but Josh said, yes, mom, you have to go. It had been three years since Krista Grant noticed a decline in her memory and energy levels. The now 62 year old teacher just shrugged it off as old age. I realized something was going on and I thought perhaps I was getting early dementia. I did not know what else to think. At the start of 2021, more normal day-to-day -day activities became a challenge for Krista. I would get in my car to go somewhere and I couldn't remember where I was going. I was struggling with learning something new for the online classes. When I would talk to anyone, I would get to the last word of the sentence and it wasn't there. I was having great difficulty. While at home with her mother, that spring, it was clear something more was going on. It was starting to affect my vision. I just couldn't get up and do anything. I didn't eat, I didn't drink, I didn't even get up to use the restroom. Well, I was concerned about it because she was sitting there beside me, obviously not really uh, comprehending anything I was saying, thinking right off the bat that she had had a stroke. We got her up and got her in the car and took her. Once in the ER, doctors sent her for a CAT scan. It wasn't a stroke. It was a brain tumor that could rupture at any moment and needed to be removed immediately. Since the small hospital didn't have the resources to perform the emergency surgery, Krista had to be taken to the Dallas Baylor Scott and White Hospital's trauma center. That was the first time I prayed. I was saying, your will, your will, God, whatever your will is, let it be done. I'm praying for the healing, but I'm also trying to prepare to pray, deal with the issues. At the trauma center, doctors found Krista's brain was swelling. Surgery would have to wait until medication could reduce the pressure caused by the tumor. Krista's family had arrived and were praying for God's healing. By the next day... It had taken the swelling down enough that I seemed back to my normal self. He set the surgery. Again, you're just rolling along with it and praying. God, would you heal her, please? Doctors said the surgery could go either way. While the tumor wasn't cancerous, the CAT scan revealed that it was entangled in the blood vessels around her brain, making removal that much more difficult. The surgery would take up to 10 hours. Worse, even the successful removal of the tumor could leave Krista impaired for life. They did tell me ahead, you may have to relearn to do everything. Eat, drink, you know, talk, read, use the bathroom. I mean, they meant everything. On May 10th, with everyone she knew praying, Krista went in for surgery. Two and a half hours later, they brought her out of the OR. The tumor had been easier to remove than anticipated. Krista's family waited for her to wake up and prayed she suffered no brain damage. Just a few hours after surgery, Krista woke up. I woke up talking and that's a good sign. So you're already thanking the Lord for that. Touched by the healing power of God, Krista wasn't in any pain and her brain was functioning well. In fact, she was... Walking, talking, praising God. <laughs> She's already talking more than I'd seen in the last number of months. Not only was Krista healed quickly, she also had a heavenly vision to share with her family. I saw the sun. Jesus, and he took me to the foot of the cross. I asked Jesus, why is there so much hurting in the world? There was a black box about this big, and he said that represents all the ways that Christians are limiting him. It represents our lack of faith. He can't do what he really can do because of our lack of faith. Jesus asked me only one question, and he asked me, will you tell the world? And then I said, yes, I will, I will. Less than a week after surgery, and with no rehab, no cognitive issues, and no physical impairment, Crystal was released from the hospital. She and her family credit God and prayer 
for her healing. The power of prayer is knowing and believing that God is hearing you and He is going to meet your need, whatever that might be. There's just not enough examples of how God works through people that pray and believe and trust Him. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Now I have the overwhelming supernatural love of Jesus that cannot be contained. Today, Krista is back to her daily activities, teaching her students and fulfilling her promise by telling everyone about the loving and healing power of God. <laughs> I'm telling people that God can heal the sick. If I see someone I, the Lord leads me to to pray for, I'm praying for them. I love doing it now. I truly love it. I have told people I have a new definition of fun because it's exciting. It's exciting to share Jesus. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Pain, sickness, and disease are so prevalent in our world today, so much so that you might be tempted to allow it to become your identity. We tend to identify with our ailment. We use words like, I have pain, or my sickness, or my mental illness. There's power in our words. And when we say, I am, or I have to something, we're owning it. The very thing we're trying to get rid of subsequent, subsequently becomes a part of us. But what would happen if we changed the way we spoke over ourselves? What would happen if we changed our thinking about the way we feel? There would be a shift. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 6, 12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. This tells us that our battle is not just physical. Whatever ailment we might be going through doesn't start and stop in our body. It's spiritual. So healing is too. Healing starts by believing that God can actually heal you. It starts with faith. It is recounted throughout the Gospels that when Jesus and his disciples went back to his hometown of Nazareth, he was completely rejected, even to the point that they wanted to throw him off the cliff. The same people who watched Jesus grow up as a carpenter's son, his friends and his relatives were highly offended that he would return calling himself the son of God. They even egged him on telling him to perform the same miracles he did in Capernaum. But because of their unbelief, their lack of faith, Jesus was unable to perform many miracles, except for the laying his hands on a few sick people and healing them. And surely those few sick people had faith. Jesus went back home wanting to heal many, but they wouldn't allow him to. Jesus wants to heal you. He wants to bind up your wounds and heal your broken heart. He wants to set you free from sickness, disease, and death. Don't allow your unbelief to be the reason why your miracle hasn't happened yet. Believe and ask God for your healing. Declare it over yourself. Lay hands on yourself and say, I am healed in Jesus' name. Speak life. God is Jehovah Rapha, your healer. We would love for you to become a 700 Club Canada monthly partner. And if you call now, we'll send you a gift entitled How to Believe for Healing. This is our free gift to you for faithfully supporting this ministry and helping transform lives. So call now at 1-855-759-0700. And you'll also receive our monthly newsletter, Frontlines. 
I had to slide my chair back and kind of pick it up. My right knee popped and my leg went numb from the knee down. We saw the doctors, we saw a specialist. The pain was constant, constant numbing sensation that I would feel all the time. Your right knee, God's restoring mobility to you. In Jesus' name, be healed. How to Believe for Healing, a new teaching from CBN, available now. What a great uh, time it has been listening to these stories and mm -hmm. hearing these miracles yes. that these individuals have experienced. You know, I last year I went for a surgery that was supposed to be a quick surgery, like easy recovery, and I ended up getting an infection. It was wow. actually a mass in my body that got an infection, and wow. it was something that was not expected at all. And I remember uh, actually being somebody who was praying that I, I had spent time in the hospital. I was on very strong antibiotics. And I remember praying over and over again. And every time I had this expectation that the next morning I would wake up completely healed. Right. And it just didn't happen. And I actually felt a lot of discouragement in mm. that. Long story short, that mass actually moved to the exact location after eight weeks, wow. um, and it was unexpected, that allowed the doctors to remove it completely. Wow. And so this just goes to show that sometimes when we're thinking of miracles or healing in our bodies, we always want this instantaneous, in the moment right. thing, but God is working even when we don't see it. That's and the right. miracle is happening even when we're, you know, don't know. Right, absolutely, you know, and, and sometimes he's testing our faith, right? Mm. Because prayer has to start with us, or sorry, healing has to start with us believing that the prayer is actually working. Mm. So our faith has to grow when we're believing for that healing. So sometimes, yeah. yes, it can be instantaneous, which of course, <laughs> you know, we all want that. <laughs> but other times it will take a long journey, yeah. your faith growing and still believing every step of the way. I mean, did you ever doubt that you were going to get healed? Oh, absolutely. There was many times where I thought, you know, I, I wondered whether the antibiotics would work or whether this was the way it was going to feel or be for a long period of time. But, you know, it's always um, when you look back, easier to see. But it's like God was working even when I didn't see him. And Amazing. that's what I remember in those moments. Amazing. Well, praise God. You know, we thank God for your healing mm -hmm. and we thank God for all of you watching. And we're believing for your healing as well. If you have an ailment, we're believing that God will heal you. And we have some partner comments. We have Ann Angela says, thank you so much for praying with me whenever I call for prayer. I love watching the show daily and seeing inspiring stories and prayer moments. And Charlene says, thank you for such a faithful ministry these past 50 years. You have blessed me in so many ways. And we thank you so much for watching today. We will see you next time. On the next 700 Club Canada, we celebrate the strength, resilience, and achievements of women worldwide as we honor International Women's Day.